Well, delighted to have one of the Donegal Olympians in studio to look ahead to the Games in Rio, Brazil, which of course takes place in the month of August. Uh, Chloe McGee, you're welcome to Highland. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you in. Yeah, it's nice to be back. <laughs> it's a nice time of the year for you as well, prepping for Olympics. Yeah, definitely. Stressful time of the year, but uh, yeah, it's good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But it's nothing really new. Do you? You've been in <laughs> at two games before, so it's there's nothing new there in the build-up to this one, is there? Uh, no, not really. I think this time was definitely the hardest one getting there, but uh, yeah, it's my third Olympic, so uh, it's definitely not new. Yeah. How's preparations been then for you over, over the yeah, last couple of months? It's been good. I mean, after Olympic qualification finished, that was a big time for me because it was a bit touch and go for a while and I had a lot of work to do at the end of qualification, which wasn't really the way I wanted it to be, but that's the way it happened and that was the way it went. So after that, then I had two weeks off and got mentally fresh again and went back at training and we went to state the America two weeks ago and uh, went pretty well so yeah I'm ready I just have a few last taper now and then we're ready to go. Yeah. How stressful was it trying to get qualification because I know you and Sam was trying to, to get qualified for, for, yeah. for the mixed doubles and then a call had to be made which one to move forward with so yeah. I'm sure that was stressful and not you but Sam as well and then trying to get into that top 37, 38. Mm. Yeah definitely I mean our mixed, obviously, we really wanted to qualify and it was tough because only 16 pairs in the whole world go. So it was a big challenge and it was one that um, I really wanted to try and make it. But unfortunately, it just didn't make it. And because with the singles and the mixed, it was two different types of tournaments we needed to be playing. And, you know, things started to slip a little bit. We had to make a call Christmas to make sure that we qualified and won. And um, the high performance team decided that was singles. And that's the, ro the road that we went. And... Yeah, I had to get back then and my ranking slipped quite a bit so I needed to get back up again and uh, yeah, it was um, a bit of stress but that's what makes it all better when yeah. you get there. <laughs> yeah. I'll just ask you on, on the health scare, the situation there in Brazil because everybody's talking about it, yeah. uh, particularly the golfers. Yeah. Uh, the Zika is something that's not worrying you, is it? No, I mean, everybody's right to have their opinion on it and mm. I think that, of course, everybody has to look at the guidelines and see what you've been sent because it is obviously a big thing in Brazil. But I mean, I have no no problems with it at all. We've been sent our information. I really trust the doctors in the institute. They, um, they're good guys. They've did their homework and, you know, they haven't left any stone unturned with us. And every week they're updating us. So I know if there was a big problem and they thought that somebody was going to get sick, they wouldn't send a team. And I fully believe that. So now I have no problem with it. I know I've done my homework on it as well. I know the risks. I know what happens and um, I'm ready to go. Yeah. There's a lot of professional athletes now moving on to, to the Olympics and the golf is, is one of them. Yeah. You know how important the Olympic movement is yeah. and how important it is for somebody in your sport yeah. uh, to be part of, of the Olympics. Do you think it's it's a bit disrespectful, maybe it might be too strong a word I'm using, mm. that the golfers have dealt with this situation the way they have? I think it is it's different for every sport and I think badminton, you know, everybody that's playing badminton at the Olympics is professional full time. So, you know, for us as a small sport, it's huge, you know, to make the Olympics is kind of the pinnacle of badminton and, you know, everybody wants to be at the Olympics and that's just the way it is for our sport. And I think it's different for all sports. So, you know, I can only speak for myself and I can't speak for them. I don't know what, what way it works for them. But um, yeah, I think for badminton to be at the Olympics is everything. And um, to me, it is also everything. Yeah. How has your preparation for 2016 differed from, from 08 and 2012 in Beijing and London? Um, I think I'm a more experienced player now. As you said, yeah. I'm 27 now, so um, it's definitely it's different. You know, your your body's different. You're working against injuries. You're working trying to be as fit as possible. And, you know, in 2012, I was just focused on singles. This time I tried to go for mixed and singles, which was probably a big ask, but, you know, it was a challenge that I wanted to take. And... Yeah, it's just it's been a little bit different this year. It's been um, a lot more work, a lot more uh, training needed, a lot more tournaments. But, I mean, I've enjoyed it. It's been some very high highs and some very low lows, but it's been a great year. And I'm just thankful to say at the end of it that I did qualify. Um, are you in better shape this time around? Or have you struggled to get up to, to be in the shape that, that, that you're in at and the level that you're at? Um, I think this time I'm definitely the best band player I've ever been. I mean, the game has also moved on hugely. You know, everybody's getting better. Everybody is as fit as each other. You know, everybody's training the same now. So it's down to small things. And I think a lot of that, you'll see a lot of players working with psychologists. And, you know, a lot of things have come down to that small mental age, that small, you know, it's very rarely you'll see that somebody's physically better. But, you know, it's technical, it's mental. And, you know, these are the small things that are making big differences. Okay. 
And how important a role does Daniel play in trying to iron out these small differences? <laughs> yeah, Daniel's part of the high performance team, yeah. so we've got like you know an Indonesian coach there as mm. well. We've got our high performance director and Dan. So yeah, he's uh, working hard in the background, and they're doing a lot of kind of you know video analysis stuff at the minute, and just trying to help us get those small differences yeah. again. And yeah, he's playing a, a big part in the background. Yeah, and obviously looking for a kind draw <laughs> for for, for Rio. It's going to be done now at the end of, of of July, and probably by the time we air uh, air this interview, yeah. you'll you'll know. Who, who, who you're playing but you'll be hoping for a kind one yeah definitely I mean the draw is a big big day and uh, you just you want to be trying to hit the lower seeds obviously like everybody does but I mean whatever happens you just uh, have to do your best to get your best performance out and if I perform to the best that I can I'll leave Rio with no regrets yeah. you'll be in either a group of three or four mm. which of those do you feel would be, would be more beneficial to you yeah I think most likely it'll be a group of three and yeah, I'll be happy with that. You know, go out and play two games and hopefully get out two good performances. And yeah, that's what I'll be looking to do. You want a game in Beijing and you want a game in London. Mm -hmm. uh, is the target now in Rio to win two games in, in, in a competition and try and get out of the group? Because you're the first Irish person to ever win two matches at, yeah. at, at an Olympic Games in, in badminton. So it's yeah. about going now to, to another level, is it? Taking another step? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would love to. I'd love to win as many games as I possibly can. Um, I mean, as I said, the draw will be a big day and if I can hit the lower stage, you never know what can happen. But it's also, um, you know, there's a lot of good players in Rio. It's, you know, the best in the world are there. So it's never going to be easy, but... Um, I just want to go and do the best that I can do and if I can do that as I said I'll leave definitely with no yeah. regrets There's not much acclimatisation required in badminton because it's indoors and, uh, yeah. and and the courts compared to like what Brendan and Mark will have to do yeah. to, to, for their walking and, and on the track stuff so what's training now going to be over the next couple of weeks what, what will you actually be doing and, yeah. and prepping uh, for Rio? Well, for me, I'm going to go to two different training camps so next week I'm going to go to England and we're going to do you know some of the best Ladies are coming from all around Europe to that camp, so that'll be brilliant. And it'll be just more or less games, so tapering. And the following week, I'll go to France, and there will be more or less the same. So both are going to be set up like halls like Rio and try and give us, you know, that same aircon, that same temperature. And yeah, after that, we just go back and do the small things that we need to work on, and then it's Rio. Yeah. So it's all very soon now to me. Yeah. Uh, you smile every time you mention the word <laughs> the word Rio. Um, are you going to try and enjoy this one more? Can, well, does this have the prospect of being your most enjoyable games because you went through two different scenarios before being on the yeah. other side of the world and then <laughs> and then closer to home? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it'll be very hard to top London. Mm. Uh, London was unbelievable and every single way possible I mean I know everybody says it's your home Olympics because we'll probably never host one ourselves but it really is um, you know everything was the same my family came the social side was brilliant you know I performed pretty well and I mean I really really enjoyed that Olympics and made some good friends lifelong friends out of the team there and I mean Rio I don't know what to expect but um I'm sure it will be good in its own way too, but I just think it will be very hard to top London. But yeah. I'm hoping uh, you never know. Yeah. We'll see. You said that you're 27 years of age, and what after Rio? Is there another four years in you to to to, to go around again and maybe try and, and get back to a tournament with Sam? Because that's something that you would love to do. Because mm. it's amazing the connection with badminton and, yeah. and the McGee family. We're going to mention a few more in, <laughs> in a minute. I know you've still got this one to, yeah. to overcome, but is that still a target you would like to do yourself and Sam? Yeah, you never know. I mean, we'll see after. Rio but uh, definitely me and Sam we've developed so much in the last two years as a mixed pair you know we've been ranked up there in the 20s in the world we've competed with the best in the world and you know I'm really excited about our future as a mixed pair because it's only the last two years we've developed so much and I think you know if you speak about being world class in Bampton I think it's me and Sam that can do that yeah. and you know you never know what will happen four years is a long time and um, I know the last four years went very fast but uh, we can just take it one year at a time mm -hmm. and see, you know, we want to win those major medals and that's where we want to be. So, yeah, there's definitely like a good future there, but it, um, it just depends on how, which way it goes. Yeah. I have to mention the younger McGee's too, and we're here, Josh, who's yeah. going well and, and, the, and the men's and the, and, and the yeah. doubles along with Sam, learning all, all the time. And, yeah. uh, and of course, there's Rachel too, mm -hmm. who's part of an Ireland setup and is working yeah. very, very hard. Uh, you would be, I suppose, the standout figure, we'll call you, in, in the McGee family. And you've got all these younger siblings trying mm. now to, to, to achieve what you do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Josh is really one of these people that I can say he determines the phrase hard work pays off. He has been there since he's been 
young, he's never got really much recognition for his work and he's worked hard, worked hard, worked hard. And this year, or last year, he won a European Games medal. This year, he's won a Slovenia Open. And I mean, it's fantastic because he's really someone that is, you know, for me and Sam, we have different things that, you know, Sam's really smart and you know, I've always worked hard, but Josh is just, you know, he really works hard. He really wants it. And that's why I'm so happy to see that he got his rewards. Mm -hmm. And then you've Rachel, who's younger again, and, you know, she's full of skill and full of confidence. and. Um, you know, she's working really hard this year down Dublin as well. So she's moved there full time, which is quite hard when you're when you're that age and, you know, all your friends are doing whatever they're doing. And she's there training every single day at badminton. And, you know, I really believe that she's in a good setup. We've got young guys now winning European medals, European junior medals. We've got, like, you know, such a good setup in Dublin now. And we work closely with the Institute of Sport. And I think it's everything is there to make Olympics. Yeah. And um, I do believe a big target for her will be Tokyo. And I'll be very surprised if um, she doesn't make that. Yeah, we'll, we'll be watching her career yeah, now yeah. very, very closely too. So then, uh, just finally, uh, does Chloe McGee have the hunger that these younger McGees have at the moment, and uh, <laughs> and ahead of the, the, the Rio Games? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I'm excited to go now. I mean, the build up and the hype and everything has just got so big. I see this last seven days, we picked up our gear and. You know, everything is just, um, it seemed always so far away and now it just seems around the corner. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting down there. I just want to see what it's all about now. I want to get and see what the hall is. And, yeah, we'll see because it's been um, it's been such a challenging year, and uh, but in a really good way. So I'm glad that every time I was kind of down and out, I came back. And, yeah, this hope that um, it was the storm before the shine mm, in Rio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, from everybody in the Highland Sports team, I'm, I'm sure everybody in the county, we're, we're all behind you, Chloe. And we, and we wish you all the best in Rio, and uh, hopefully you'll be getting those two victories that you're looking for. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Best of luck with it. Thank you.